What's going on, guys? It is Monero Mateo. How you guys doing? We've got some new entrants to the community that I think that we're going to grow. And Josh, uh, Miki, and some others have made some very nice comments about the channel, and I really appreciate that. Um, I made a video yesterday about Christ, and there was a lot of synchronicity which happened yesterday, what we Christians call providence. I was um, working on some other things uh, for the channel, and I was also working on some things in regards to work, or at least I thought I was going to. And then I went to go get on my laptop to get onto the server to do some bookkeeping and some things that I need to get done for the weekend, because what we do is we reconcile accounts on the weekend for all the transactions that were done during the week, and then we make uh, financials to send out to our clients and stuff like that. And we have to have that done on the weekends. And so typically I work Saturday and Sunday to get that done. And it's typically an all-day thing. I have many clients to do. And I had just come back from church, and I had sat down at my laptop to get to work, and I couldn't get onto the server. There was some weird error I haven't seen before. And I thought, well, that's, that's unfortunate because I need to get all this stuff done. But you know what? Instead, I'm going to work on my catechumen. And I want to devote the day to, uh, you know, working on my education, my edification for Christ. And I flipped open my book, the book that we went through yesterday, actually called The Law of God. Maybe you remember this from yesterday's video. And when I flipped it open... It took me to the fourth commandment, which is where I left off last time reading, and it was about how you need to remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy, and not laboring on that sixth day. And it was rather weird, right? And so I took that as a sign. I'm going to sit back and just read and listen to some podcasts about Christianity and edify myself. And so anyways... Um, I had to do a lot of work today in regards to that, so I'm getting to this a little bit later in the day than I would have liked, and instead of finishing some of these other videos, I decided to just do news, because that's easy to do, frankly. I can just open up an article, and we could talk about it, and you know, we could relate that to what's going on in the privacy coin community and the crypto community. And one thing that I wanted to talk about today was what's going on in the bond market what's going to be happening in the stock market, and why it is that I think so much capital, so much money is going to flood into cryptos, into gold and silver, which, by the way, we talk about privacy coins on this channel. But look, <laughs> silver and gold are the OG privacy coins. Like, they are the first among all. They are God's money. I mean, you know, we, we can't just be all into crypto because crypto depends on you know, a couple of derivative functions working, you know, electricity, internet, and based on where it is we're going, I wouldn't put all of my eggs into that basket. As much as we are our mateys and as much as we are Monero mateys and everything like that, we should always have a plan B, right? So I, I like silver and I like gold and, I, and capital is also going to go into commodities. It's going to go into emerging markets and all this other stuff. But specifically, I think a lot of it's going to go into crypto, especially as Crypto is more embraced by the investment community as pensions maybe start to get into it um, because pensions have a lot of U.S. treasuries, and we're going to talk about that today. But this is an article about treasury yields puking, right? And so what does that mean? It means there are a lot of people purchasing bonds. And why are they purchasing bonds? Because they're worried about what's going on with this Delta variant. They're worried about... Uh, different countries shutting down their economies. I think China just went down on lockdown today. And Sydney, Australia has been on lockdown. And I think Australia is moving more so in that direction. And you see protests everywhere. Nobody wants to have this lockdown again, except for the higher echelonic elites and the government workers who get to stay home and get paid anyway, based on on the backs of the taxpayer, which can't work, which doesn't make any sense at all. But people are quite okay with that. And I know people who have worked in the government. And 2020 is like the best year ever for them. Because they just got to stay home and rake in a check, you know? And they didn't think too much about the implications of that, but they're like, yeah, this is awesome. And they're typically the ones who are like, okay, if we see one single case, we got to lock down. And so you're going to have biases. The more that the population is dependent on the government, the more people are going to look at the Delta variant and be incentivized to be scared because they're going to be like, okay, well, if this is as scary as they say, and the media is really hyping it up, then... Cool. Let's get on another lockdown. Let's get more stimmy checks going. Let's get the 
unemployment back, you know, because nobody wants to work. And so the market's pricing in everything like this. And so a lot of people are purchasing bonds because they're quote unquote safe and backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. taxpayer. But we're going to look at some of these statistics today. And I think some of you may be shocked if you're not aware of some of these things. And I think you're going to understand why it is I think so many people at a certain point are going to flood out of the bond market into cryptos, into precious metals, into commodities, and real things, real assets. So this is a chart looking at the 10-year real yield. Now, uh, if you remember from your economics class, there are nominal yields and then there are real yields. So in the United States, the 10-year nominal yield is trading at about 1.15. Now, what that means is you give your money to the government and say you give $10 to the government, you buy a bond, a 10-year bond. So you can expect over the next 10 years, every single year, you're going to get uh, 15 cents from the government. I think that's what the math is. Well, let's make it $100, make it easy. So you're going to get a dollar and 15 cents from the government every single year for the next 10 years until you get your principal back, which is the $100. Now, the real yield factors in inflation. And in the United States, according to the CPI, inflation is about 5.5%. And, and the CPI is totally cooked, okay? We could go into all the weird hedonic adjustments and the weird substitutions that they do and the deflation uh, elements that they throw into there to make it seem not as big a deal as it is. And there's so much to talk about the CPI. It's just such a mess. But it measures inflation at 5.5%, which is a lot, even for the CPI, even for the government to admit that's a lot. That's as much as it was during the 70s. But the real rate, all of us know, is a little bit higher. It's more like 15 to 20%, really. And I think Zillow, they did a study... Uh, and Zillow is a private company, and so their statistics are a little bit more reliable. Inflation in the rental market is running like 20 to 25 percent. Okay, and if you go to Costco, if you go to some of these other stores, and all of you go shopping, so you're going to know what I'm talking about. You notice that the amount that you're getting is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Like if you go to Costco and you buy paper towels the amount of sheets per roll is declining, yet the price is staying the same. And so when that gets factored into the CPI, it, it doesn't get factored, basically. But if you take into account the fewer sheets that are being put into these rolls that they're selling you, they've measured inflation for paper towels to be 15% at Costco, at the wholesaler. So if you go to Publix or something like that and you get fewer rolls, you're probably uh, paying even higher. So... If you take, let's say, let's be conservative and say it's 10%. Okay. So if the 10-year treasury is yielding 1.15% and inflation is 10%, which means you're, you're losing 10% of your purchasing power every single year, uh, well, what is 1.15 minus 10%? I mean, that's almost a real negative yield. That's what you call the real negative yield, which is the nominal rate minus the inflation rate. That's a real negative yield of almost 10%, okay? And inflation is higher than 10%, okay? It's, the real yield is much less. And what is the 10-year bond used for? Well, it's the benchmark for auto loans, for a lot of student loans, for mortgages, for a lot of things, okay? It's how bankers can kind of gauge what they should charge interest on for a lot of the loans that they loan out into the market. And another thing that we've seen is, uh, banks like Wells Fargo and Chime and some of these other banks, American Express, they're cutting off lines of credit to people. Now, why would they do that? Well, if you're loaning out money and you're anticipating inflation going up, then the money that you're going to get back from those loans is going to be not as valuable as the money that you're loaning out today. So when the time value of money becomes negative... Okay, why would you want to loan out money? What, what gain would you get from getting that money back later? Spend it now. That's what this all means. And so you can see gold right here is very much undervalued relative to the inverse 10-year 
real yield. There's a bit of a divergence. And I mean, if this factored in the real inflation rate, which right now it's negative 1.21, we were just talking, it's about negative 10%. I mean, gold would be at like $5,000 an ounce. Now, what does that mean for other inflation adjusted assets? Okay, Bitcoin, what does that mean for Bitcoin? What does that mean for the privacy coins? Uh, they're going to skyrocket too. They're going to skyrocket too. Because why would you want to be in these bonds? If you're holding a 10-year treasury, and inflation is 10%, you're literally losing money. You're guaranteed a loss. But the government, they'll tell you, hey, this is a guaranteed return because it's backed by the full faith and credit of the United States. And Moody's and S&P, they all rate it as triple A. It's, it's crap. It's garbage. Have you guys seen the big short when they're in like the Moody's office and the lady's wearing the sunglasses and, you know, Steve Carell's character and the other guy are like, uh, so how do you guys rate these AAA when the underlying collateral is clearly deteriorating? And it's like, we just, we just do what they tell us to do because that's what sells. And she takes off her glasses and they're like, what did you just say? So you're saying that Trillions upon trillions of bonds are malrated, and people think that these are safe to invest in when they're really not. They're really garbage. That's what's going on with these treasuries. They're garbage. These are subprime securities. <laughs> and how many of these treasuries do you have? <laughs> You've got $28 trillion of this stuff. I just want to make sure I'm still recording. $28.5 trillion of this stuff. <laughs> right? That is scary. Um, that's a lot of capital that's going to be moving somewhere else when people figure out what's going on. And there's another statistic down here I wanted to show you guys. Uh, the dollar to gold ratio. You guys see where my mouse is right there? Maybe not. It's over in the right. It has gold at about $20,000 an ounce. And you look at silver. It has silver about $2,800 an ounce. Now, I'm not saying it's going to get that high, but I'll tell you what. Price of gold. It's not $1,800 an ounce for gold. Price of silver. It is not $25 an ounce for silver. These things are manipulated to the downside, which we'll make videos about another time. We'll talk about the Bank of International Settlements. We'll talk about how they manipulate the markets. And the Reddit short squeeze, which happened earlier this year, which almost broke it, but wasn't quite enough. And, and, and we're, again, we're going to get to the privacy coin part of this. And why does I think those are going to just go nuclear ballistic as a result of all this? But how big is the global bond market? The entire global bond market is $123.5 trillion. $123.5 trillion. The entire crypto market is about $1.2 trillion. $1.2 trillion. And this doesn't even take into account the stock market. And the stock market is so elevated because of the bond market. Because of the bond market. Because people can get loans for 0% interest. And if you can get a loan for 0% interest, that's basically free money. Why not just gamble with it? If stocks only go up, which they have over the last 12 years, why not just take out a loan if you're a big bank or an institutional investor and throw it into the market? Get a guaranteed rate of return, pay back the loan, you just made free money. That's why you have a stock market bubble. That's why you have a real estate bubble. That's why you have everything in this economy, a total bubble, because you have a bond market bubble. And the reason you have a bond market bubble is because the Fed keeps printing trillions of dollars in order to purchase those bonds, which otherwise nobody would want, okay? I mean, if the Fed ever thought about not purchasing these bonds, everybody around the world would sell these things in an instant. And that's what happened in December 2018 when Powell was like, we're going on autopilot. And Janet Yellen, I think she said in 2015 when she started her taper program, oh, it's going to be as relaxing as watching paint dry. And then like, boom, <laughs> stocks just crashed. And then they're like, we're just kidding. We're <laughs> getting back in there. We were just kidding. So th there's nothing that they can do about it. They say that they're going to hike rates in two years. I mean, that's like somebody who 
is like super fat, right? Saying, oh, I'm going to go on a diet in two years. Do you believe them? And when they said that in the FOMC meeting a couple months ago, that week they had expanded their balance sheet by the most since March of the previous year. So again, it's like a big fat guy stuffing his face with Twinkies saying, yeah, I'm going to go on a diet in a couple of years. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. So a lot of money just sitting around in assets which are guaranteed to lose money. Right. I mean, if anything, that makes these proof of stake coins look pretty good. Right. Cardano, uh, Algorand, if you're willing to put up with the tax burden of reporting all that stuff. Um and being tracked, yeah, I mean, you could get a better rate of return than uh, than this stuff. So, how much debt is in the Eurosphere? Where's the European debt clock? I had that up somewhere. Here it is. Come on, Internet. Please come to me. There we go. So, EU total debt is about $10 trillion. It's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. And what are their bonds yielding right now? Well, we're talking about negative real interest rates. But in Europe, you've got negative nominal interest rates. So that's before even inflation is calculated into the equation, which of course they're lying about. They're saying it's about 2%, which inflation may not be as bad as it is here in the United States, but still it's over 2%. But even if it is 2%, they're negative before inflation. The German Bund is yielding negative. The French bond is yielding negative. Italy's basically at zero. Spain's basically at zero. Uh, the Netherlands, negative 0.4. Uh, Switzerland, negative 0.44. So... There's trillions of dollars of capital in these negative yielding bonds. Insane. It's just insane. All that capital is going to go somewhere, guys, when all this stuff hits. Where is it going to go? Well, let's just pull up our friends at CoinMarketCap. So the total market cap of Bitcoin is $745 billion. A lot of that's going to go into Monero. Uh, total market cap is $1.6 trillion. <laughs> so let's get to the privacy part of this. Why is it do I think that a lot of that capital is going to make it into privacy coins? Well, first off, a lot of the people who hold Bitcoin right now are people who got in early. And they're anticipating it going up. And now that Bitcoin is sort of like the safe place to be relative to many other cryptocurrencies... Uh, a lot of them are just sticking in Bitcoin, and a lot of them don't want to pay the taxes on the gains. Uh, and so they're just kind of holding on to it. They think it's going to go higher, especially as this shift, this wealth transfer continues as institutional money goes into Bitcoin. But a lot of those people in Bitcoin who are individuals just like you or me, people who aren't running any institutions, people who aren't banksters, people who are probably libertarian anarcho-capitalists living in the woods somewhere, I mean, probably, literally— those people are going to get out of their Bitcoin and lock in their gains by atomically swapping their Bitcoin for Monero, for Pirate Chain, and for some of these other privacy coins. Now, why would they do that? Because if they cashed out their Bitcoin for U.S. dollar coin, which, you know, there's an interesting thing that I thought about today. I, I don't know what the logistics of this would be, but say that atomic swaps start to occur for Bitcoin and Monero, Bitcoin pirate chain, pirate chain and Monero, and just private decentralized exchanges become a thing in the cryptocurrency space, which would just be, it would just be a phenomenal game changer for this space. And it would make Monero and pirate chain go nuclear. That's already in the cards, I think. But just imagine, right, that you can atomic swap your Monero and your pirate chain for US dollar coin. And not the U.S. dollar coin that's in here, not the stable coin, but the central bank digital currency. Oh, my. Oh, my gosh. Why would anyone want to be in Bitcoin? Why would anyone want to be in a public blockchain when you can just 
privately swap your Monero for for these uh, currencies that you could pay your taxes with, that you could invest in into the markets, that you could purchase goods and services online. Because let's say that Monero becomes illegal. Okay, whatever. Well, the atomic swap networks are still going to be there. It's not like they can get rid of those unless they get rid of the internet. Okay. People are always going to be doing this stuff in some part of the world where Monero is legal. And if it's not legal, then again, people are going to find ways to do this on the dark web and stuff like that. But right now, you can get counterfeit currency. And I'm not advising anyone to do this. This is illegal. But you can exchange your Monero for counterfeit currency on the dark web. Okay. So you can cash out your crypto profits in a way that's kind of clunky and it's kind of sketchy and illegal. But if the currency goes totally digital, the US dollar, the euro, yen, and you can tap into pools of liquidity using your Monero and your pirate chain, whoo, <laughs> dude. That's going to be immense because what's going to happen is a lot of these people in Bitcoin are going to swap their Bitcoin for Monero in order to avoid cashing out their Bitcoin. Because if you swap it for US dollar coin, if you sell it for US dollar coin, the central bank digital currency, or you sell it, transact it for another public blockchain, which is a taxable event, uh, then you're going to have to pay taxes. And that's on the record and you're going to be liable for that. But if you swap it for Monero first, and Monero serves as sort of like this money laundering pool, which again, I mean, I'm not advising any of this. It's totally legal. <laughs> I want to say that a million times because I don't want to make it look like, but I'm just saying, right? We're talking about the logistics of money flows and stuff like that. This is academic. Then like so many people are going, like the liquidity pool for Monero is going to go nuclear. Now, I don't know if this is a thing. I don't know if swaps for U.S. dollar coin are going to be a thing. I don't know. I mean, maybe a lot of stuff is traced in a way that you can't do that. I, I don't know, right? But it's just something to think about. It's just something to think about. But either way, let's say the atomic swaps come out from Monero and Pirate Chain, which I'm going to make a video about later. Uh... And a lot of institutional money begins to move into Bitcoin and Ethereum and a lot of these major coins, and people are getting rich. Okay, a lot of these people are going to, before the regulations clamp down, which make you identify your wallet, make you identify the people you're transacting with, make you identify what you've transacted for and everything like that, because I think that's coming. Especially if you get institutional involvement, the regulation is going to, boom, just go through the roof. It's just going to go through the roof. People are going to rush for the exits to get into Monero and Pirate Chain, the private cryptocurrency, so that they don't have to put up with all the headaches of regulation and taxes. Now, whether that's legal or not, I mean, people are going to do it. People are going to do it. And Jeff Berwick was talking about somebody that he was in contact with who said that he got into Bitcoin like uber early. And now he's just got like $100 million of Bitcoin laying around. And he was looking forward to the atomic swaps opening up for Pirate Chain. Because he doesn't want to touch this stuff. He doesn't want to move it onto Coinbase and identify where his wallet is and stuff like that. He wants to swap it out for Monero and Pirate Chain. And if you got into Bitcoin early enough to where you're kind of off the grid, uh, maybe you got a lot of your Bitcoins from places which weren't know your customer yet. Maybe you didn't have to register anywhere. You could just move it to a wallet, move it to another wallet, and there's no way for anyone to figure out like whose wallet that is. You're going to swap out of there. Like You're not going to risk your Bitcoin going back onto a know your customer exchange or to anywhere the government could suspect that that's your wallet, right? You're going to swap the hell out of that. And who knows, you get into pirate chain, maybe you get back into Bitcoin with atomic swaps just to get exposure. Maybe you purchase Haven. And if you guys have, haven't checked out Haven, I've Definitely check that out. Maybe you get into Haven, you buy Haven, and then you get into the X asset market. And then you get exposure to Bitcoin 
except it's X Bix- it's X Bitcoin, and it's not the actual Bitcoin, but through Chainlink, you can get exposure to the price movements. And then if you make mega gains, because Bitcoin still goes to the roof, but you're exposed to the price, you cash that out for Haven, and then you sell that onto the market. Like, you're going to be able to get away with not paying tens upon tens of millions of dollars in taxes. And so these privacy coins are just going to go through the roof. Now, they could be temporary points of liquidity. Like it may, be, it may not be people use these as mediums exchange in daily life, especially if there's like a real crackdown um, for uh, against Monero. Because if they crack down against Monero, you know, you put like a Monero address on your website if you're selling like cookies or something like that. Maybe you can't do that because Monero is illegal, and it, it's hard to find a way to convey to your clientele how it is to pay you a Monero. So. It could be that instead of medium of exchange, a lot of Monero would be used and exchanged as a way of just washing out cryptocurrencies, which are public, right? Which will still increase the supply and demand, uh, or just the demand, right? And increase the value of the currency. But I, I think that's going to be a thing. I think that's going to be a thing. So just a few things to talk about here. Uh, let me go full screen. Stretch. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that trillions of dollars of capital are going to move into the cryptocurrency market, and you're going to see a lot of liquidity move into privacy coins. A lot of liquidity. Now, it's still yet to be seen whether or not the governments are going to allow Monero, Pirate Chain, some of these other coins to be used as mediums of exchange. For now, you can do it, and if you can do it right now, I would. I really would. And it's being used as a medium of exchange on the dark web. I don't think that's going to change. And it could be that, you know, <laughs> you know, if you're like a, a cookie company, you love Monero so much that you sell your cookies to cartel <laughs> narcos guys on the dark web <laughs> for Monero. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you like have this huge agorist libertarian community pop up on the dark web and maybe their services are innocuous. Maybe there's nothing illegal about the services they provide. They just really love pirate chain. And they're not going to allow the government to dictate to them what they want to exchange with. Right? So that could be a thing. And um, I was going to talk about mining rigs a little bit today, but uh, I think that we've covered a good bit here for the day. I, I might leave that for a later video. I was talking to somebody on Twitter about that, and uh, he, he said he's going to check the channel tomorrow. And let, let me see what his name is. I'm going to give him a shout out. He's a cool guy. Uh, if you guys haven't followed me on Twitter, go ahead and follow me on Twitter. I just made it. Disco Lazarus. Give him a follow. He's a cool guy. Uh, we talked about Monero mining a little bit. Because I think Zero Hedge came out with an article talking about uh, China's crackdown on the Bitcoin miners. And my statement was, Monero fixes this because all you need to mine Monero is a laptop. You can just flip open your laptop and then do, 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 do. You're mining Monero. You don't need these ASICs rigs. You don't need these giant factories. Anyone can mine Monero. It's truly decentralized, which is amazing. Now, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> I'm not a tech guy. I'm a tax guy. I am a holistic thinker when it comes to these things. But um, I'm trying to learn a little bit more about the tech. I heard the book Mastering Monero is a good place to start for this stuff. But I still have yet to learn how to mine it. Uh, if you have some good resources on that, would you send it to me? Would you leave a comment? Um, and on top of that, uh, somebody just called me. Interesting, interesting. Who just did that? Perhaps a client. But, uh, sorry, I don't mean to do that. Uh, but if you have any information on Monero mining, would you send that to me? If you think this content is good, if you think that other people could benefit from this content, would you mind sharing this video? Uh, please like the video if you liked it. Uh, subscribe to the channel. It really helps me grow. And I think that we do talk about a lot of meaningful stuff here on the channel. Uh, not just privacy coins, not just the economy, but also uh, Christ. I I'm a big uh, Christian fan, I guess you could say. Uh, if you're a Christian... Uh, leave a comment. We love God, right? But uh, I do a Sunday stream every Sunday. We talk a little bit about that. But for the most part, we just love privacy coins. I think the community is great so far. I've met a lot of you. You guys seem really well-intentioned and cool and good human beings who want the best for your fellow human being. You know, it's not just about the gains. It's about 
surviving this technocratic totalitarian Satanist system that we're moving into, which is kind of getting freaky. And, uh, you know, as that old saying goes, Monero fixes this. <laughs> and uh, I think we all need to start commenting about that more on Twitter and Gab. You know, you hear a lot of people say, oh, Bitcoin fixes this. Well, Monero fixes this, right? Monero fixes this. So we love Monero. We love the privacy coins. Go ahead and, uh, you know, share the video if you like it. I think that's it. I think that's it. Follow me on Gab. Follow me on Twitter. And I also took up somebody's advice to make a Rumble and an Odyssey account, and I'm working on that at the moment. Go ahead and follow me there for when YouTube invariably kicks me off of here. So, Not that I want you to do that. I don't think there's any reason to kick me off. Just saying, YouTube, please don't do that. <laughs> but it's probably going to happen. But we give them our love anyway. Anyways, that's all, guys. It's Monero Mateo. You guys have a wonderful day. I will see you guys tomorrow.